So the New York Jets pass rusher, Hassan Riddick, has requested a trade. Now he has left one, he has one year left on his contract, and he's been holding out for the Jets ever since they got him in the offseason. But what's surprising about this is the New York Jets, they seen his trade request and they said no. <laughs> they dead ass said no. They released the statement just kind of doubling down on their intentions of saying no to make sure they're not deemed as the villain in this whole story. So in the statement, they said, we have informed the sign that we will not trade him, that he is expected to, to be here with his teammates and that he will continue to be fined by the CBA if he does not report to camp. Since the trade discussions back in March, we have been clear and direct and consistent with our position. Our focus will remain on the guys that we have here as we prepare for the regular season. So to me, I'm like, damn, I've, I've never, ever seen any team come out and just openly say, no, we're not going to trade you. I don't care how many times you request a trade. And that was a shocker. But. You begin to go down a slippery slope here if you don't satisfy this guy's needs of trading him because to what extent are you going to really hold out on being traded for both parties in this situation? Because we know the Jets, they can keep him as long as they want to until that contract is really up. And for Hassan Riddick, he could say, you know what? Well, I'll show up to camp. I'll show up to practice. I'll show up to the facility. But I'm not going to play. I'm not going to give any effort. And ultimately, that's going to cause him to be a cancer on the team when the Jets team is supposed to be pretty damn good this season. So if I'm the New York Jets, I'm like, I really don't want to go down a rabbit hole of playing how petty can we be in terms of making sure this guy gets traded or he doesn't get traded because, I mean, it's ultimately going to hurt your locker room if you have a guy who's here and he does not want to be there. So you got to find a trade for him, especially if he's not going to continue to give effort, if he's just kind of being a cancer in that locker room, which he can start to be. Like, do you really want to kick off the season like that with a bunch of drama going on, especially when Aaron Rodgers is on the verge of the back end of his career, trying to go win a Super Bowl in the two years that he may have left in his career, maybe even three? No, I personally wouldn't want to do that. And, and there hasn't been a full story on, you know, why he wants to trade exactly or, you know, why the parties are, why both parties are in a disagreement about this. But, you know, I, I can't help but to think, obviously, it's something with the coaching staff or the front office. I mean, he got traded. He, he's coming from the Eagles. That's a competitive team. They had a shot to, you know, make some some history in the playoffs last year, but the season kind of went downhill as time went on. So, you know, it, it can't be the competitive level of, oh, I want to play for a contender because obviously the Jets, they're a decent contender in their conference right now and in their division. So I don't see it being that, but... You know, either way, this is going to be a huge loss for the Jets. I mean, Hassan Riddick, this is a guy, man. He's he's dominant at his position. You're talking about top three in his position, not even top five, if not the one and only and the best at his position right now. So, you know, you kind of have to put together some sort of deal where you can ship him off somewhere, maybe even try and get some pieces, some draft pieces or something, because it's not going to do any good having a guy there who doesn't want to give any effort or play for your organization. So to me, I, I don't know how long that the New York Jets are going to be willing to hang out and decide that, hey, we're not going to trade them. But above all, one guy shouldn't be making or breaking your season. And that's especially if he's not the quarterback, first and foremost. If he's not the quarterback, he definitely shouldn't make or break your season. I get what he can do on the defensive end. I understand how it'll help all of your schemes on the defensive line because you still have uh, the big uh, Quinnen... Uh, Quinnen, is it Quinnen Richardson? No, 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 that's not Quinnen. But they still have a, a, a solid pieces on the D-line. They got other guys there who will help them out. So he's not the only piece. He's not going to make or break the defense. Going to be a huge help. But above all, to me, it seems like it will be better to ship him off and get some sort of pieces in return for a guy who doesn't want to be there. Because, oh, it can get petty. Best believe it can get petty. I know if I'm somewhere I don't want to be, and they're like, no, they're not going to trade me. I mean, all he has to do is show up. He won't be fined by the CBA anymore if he continues to show up. They can't find him for not giving effort. They can't find him for saying no to reps on the field. They can't find him for, for being silly during practice and, and distracting others. They can't find him for any of those things. So how petty do you really want to get in terms of trading this man? He asked for a trade. 
You said no. And to me, this man has every right to be petty back and do whatever he got to do to get traded because, I mean, ultimately the power relies within him. Like, I respect that the Jets are like, no, you're not doing it. We're not letting you go. But, hey, that, that's where it is now. So we'll see. But look.